Hey guys and gals, I'm Pal and welcome back to Earthbound. Last time, we alleviated the zombie apocalypse for the people of Threed. And I launched my new commentary filter program, Shish Kebab Thingamajig, which should make my commentary sound better. Not my commentating, but my commentary. This time, we're going to be making our way. We're going to be marking our way. No, we're going to be making our way through Grapefruit Falls, hopefully to Saturn Valley, which is, as this guy says, full of <clears throat> interesting people. So we're going to be seeing what that's all about this episode. Let's go. Now, this area is interesting right here because this guy carries some food items for you. But there is also an infinitely spawning butterfly location right here. It's kind of hard to cycle off screen because you might have to expose a few enemies to do it. But there it is. And in fact, am I at full? No. Am I at full PP? Uh, yes. No. Okay, so I can, I can make use of that butterfly right now. Hello, butterfly. You are mine. Make me calm. The magic butterfly made Ness and his friends relax. You know, up until now, I've never realized how interesting that comment is. How is it making them relax, and why is it magic? Okay, there's a bomb here. Let's let's give that to Jeff. Give Jeff, since Jeff will be using his turns for items anyway. I did stock up a great deal on uh, on bottle rockets for Jeff, so he'll be set for a long time. I'm. I'm really surprised we're not seeing any enemies here, because they should be swarming the area. Oh, there's one. Hello. Let's go ahead and fight you. There's zombie, and then a cohort. And the cohort's name is Armored Frog. Not NS Armored Frog, just Armored Frog. And a very, very select few of you will get that reference. It's not even referencing public media or anything. Now, the one thing that all these enemies have in common is their weakness to psychic attacks. So, I will use those, not with Ness, but with Paula. Let's attack the, actually, let's attack the farm zombie with Bash, and then also attack the farm zombie with, I think Frieza, uh, I think Freeze Alpha should do it. Let's attack him with PSI Frieza, and then have Jeff, Let's see, I don't want to have him use- Oh, you, 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 you. Let's have him use the slime generator, since I haven't used that yet. And it's an AoE attack, so I might as well use it. Freeze does nothing. Okay. That's nice. The slime generator does something and solidifies their bodies. That's a good thing to hear. I'll keep using the slime generator. Ugh. Except Jeff's taking some damage. Uh, life up alpha on Jeff should be enough. I, I highly doubt anyone's going to die here. And let's have Polly use fire, since I think that will work. And Jeff... I'm going to have you... Mm, you can use that bomb that I just gave you. Bomb them. Fire hits, does... That's the damage I was looking for. Destroys the zombie and almost kills the armored frog. And Ness brings Jeff up to healthy levels. And the frog should be able to be finished off with bash attacks, even though they do trash amounts to the frog. Yeah, that that wasn't that's not a good idea, I guess. I already knew that the armored frog has insanely high defense, but I didn't think that it would be that much. Uh, let's use Frieza again. I'm still running with that joke because I find it infinitely amusing. Frieza hits, and Frieza uses his finger beam. and they return to the dust of the earth. And I have a protein drink. That's that's good, because I'm now healthy. I, I have healthy things. So this cave is where we want to go, because if we go up north, it'll lead to a dead end that we're unable to do anything with. So if we go to this cave, this will... Well, it'll lead to another dead end, but it will be good, better for us. It's a better... Be yeah, it's a better... Be a better dead end to end up in. Goodness, I can't talk about anything. Which is sad, because I had some really cool things to say about this episode. Like, <laughs> I was going to go on a rant about grapefruit. Because grapefruits are awesome. And it's an acquired taste, but seriously, have grapefruit juice and you'll feel healthy about yourself. And oh my goodness, what is that? This is Saturn Valley, and these are the interesting people that live here. 
these are Mr. Saturn's. We feel groove. Uh, hi-ho, me, Mr. Saturn. This place, all are Mr. Saturn. I'm not sure what voice I'm going to use for him right now. Uh, I guess I'll just alternate until I land on a good one. Vegeta's out. Vegeta's definitely out. Cell? No, no, let's not do Cell. But something else. Do you want slumber? K.O. Neat. So there's free slumber here. There's also a free hospital, and I wish there was a free store, but for the items you get at the store, it might as well be a free store as well. And this is Mr. Saturn Zoom, and I repair your body, boing. Do you want me to operate on you, ding? No. Are you, uh, are you Kale? If you all right, that's great. Zoomer. <laughs> I guess Waluigi works as a voice for these guys. Once upon a time, we were many, many, every day, slowly, are less, less. Why? Hmm. Boing. <laughs> it's very hard to read anything these guys say. Not only is it, you know, different grammar, I'm not going to call it bad because I would be insulting the fair people of Saturn Valley, but it's hard to read because of the font. I guess the font could be read as their accent. Let's see, there are trash cans here. There is a sudden guts pill. Let's give that to Ness, because he likes those guts, yo. What? 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 That's... Did you see that? The sudden guts pill cannot be used here. Why? That makes no sense. Oh, it's a sudden guts pill, not a guts pill. I feel dumb. Oh. It, it'll give us instant guts in battle, not permanent guts. Oh, man, I feel stupid. Well, I thought maybe it was because it would appear rude to be taking drugs in the middle of <laughs> creatures that look like they would have been born out of a bad trip, but... I guess not, it's because the game makes sense, and I'm not able to use a temporary battle item outside of battle. We all look like same. I give you some- I give you special thing. Not now, Zoom. I give you the way back, boing. Bye later. Siri, Siri guy, boing. Grapefruit Falls. Siri, sick. Barfy. Go and la la la. <laughs> Ding. Soar, uh, Siri. <laughs> <laughs> Did he seriously say ever- He does! I'm not mistaking that. That's Siri Siri guy, boing. Uh, Grapefruit Fall, Siri Siri, s sick, barfy, go and la la la. <laughs> uh, Earthbound is strange. Base, secret. <laughs> Base behind Grapefruit Falls. Password? I tell. Uh, what does that say? Uh, B. What? I don't even know what that says. It's B E A E H. Be oh, no, it's a C. Belchman say, say password, then stand still. Wait for three minutes. <laughs> I'm sorry, that guy still threw me off. Siri, Siri. So, boing, you have $380. We trade secret herb. S so, boing. You have $1,780. We trade Thorn of Life, which is a fantastic item. I'm fairly certain it does what the Cup of Life Noodles does, except somehow better? I am unfamiliar with that item, but you can get a lot of good items in here, and the Siri guy's really... He's really messing with my groove. You can't stop my dunks, you can't match my hustle. Even no matter how much you say Siri. <laughs> uh, I will never forget that, man. He... He highlighted the day for me. Okay, here's the shop, and this weird spitty McGogger has the monies, all of the monies, and I will withdraw all the monies, and I'm not going to save yet, even though I am due to, uh, because I would like to buy some things before I save. Hi, hi, hi. You come buying? You can sell too. I'm Mr. Saturn, boing. I can, can do all for you. What do you want, Zoom? I want to buy, uh, goodness. Alright, all my buying is done. Now, one thing that did happen is I commentated 
the purchase of all these items, but I realized very quickly that that was a, a colossal waste of time. So instead, I'll just show you what I did and what these guys carry. Um, this Mr. Saturn carries a bionic slingshot, which, as you can see, is a better weapon for Ness and Paula, but the problem with slingshots is that they have great power at the cost of accuracy, so you're likely to hardly ever hit your attacks, but when you do, it will deal massive damage, and I don't think the trade-off is worth it, because it will be wasting some of your turns, so I'm not going to be getting any slingshots unless, I don't know, I need it for a specific pur uh, purpose, like, um, trying to insta-kill enemies, because that, it's not accuracy that the game takes into account, it's power, but whatever. Um, next I got great charms for the entire group, it just raises your defense by a little bit. I got silver bracelets for the entire group, also raises your defense for the entire group. And actually, I believe the great charm lo raises speed as well, but I could be wrong. Um, next I got the red ribbon for Paula, which is just an upgraded ribbon for her. And then, I proceeded to go to this guy, and I bought some of his stuff. He has an insecticide spray, which I've explained what that does. He has a stag beetle, which is a one-time use item that uh, I believe solidifies the enemy. Uh, refreshing herb, which cures a bunch of status ailments. A peanut cheese bar, which... Let me, let me show you my inventory here. If you go into my inventory, or if I go into my inventory, you'll see I, I got a lot of these, because they're good. Peanut cheese bars are one of Mr. Saturn's favorite foods. It tastes pretty yummy. When eaten, it, you recover about 100 HP. And these cost $22 each, so it's worth it, in my opinion, to get these. And you can see my finished inventory. I sold a bunch of the stuff that Ness had. In fact, he's still holding onto a bottle rocket, which I can... Oops, no, no, no. I can give to Jeff. There. And Jeff, you can see, is holding a lot of items. Mostly bottle rockets, but he's also holding onto a bunch of broken items and defense spray and another defense spray which is yet to be fixed. Uh, yeah, Jeff will be like this for the entire game. But Paula, I think it's best that if I equip her with food items, because Ness can heal himself and other people, but Paula, if Ness can't heal, she may need to use an item quickly, and since she's going to be likely move, uh, acting first in any battle, I think it's best that sometimes she needs to save her own hide. Uh, then Jeff, he's, he's okay. He's cool. Uh, yeah, that's, that's it, I think. I also saved off-screen, so I'm rocking the, uh, the banana thing, which in case you couldn't tell is my favorite. And now I'm broke-ish. I have $1,400 left. Yeah, okay, um... I didn't explain one more item, which I can right now, because I didn't waste a bunch of time commentating my my purchases. He also has the Horn of Life, which is essentially a cup of life noodles light. Let me see if I can read to you what it does. Um, let me let me load this thing up. It revives a friend who is unconscious. In addition, it also works well on poison, nausea, colds, sunstroke, falling asleep, uncontrollable crying, and feeling strange. This is also effective when you have paralysis or when you have been diamondized. So that item is good, and it's also immensely expensive. So I don't want this, at least right now. I have my cup of life noodles, and that is good enough for me at the moment. It also has a secret herb, which I believe is just like a horn of life light. So it, it cures status ailments, but not as many, and it also doesn't revive a friend who is unconscious. Next is the picture postcard, which I had to look this up because it was interesting. Like, I was so curious about this thing, but it doesn't do anything. It's the same thing as we got in, um, in uh, Happy Happy Village, so it does nothing. You just sell it. So that's kind of lame, but it's there in case you want it. Okay, that's that's it for my purchases. Let's move on. I'm so glad that I went with the decision to cut all this out. It would have taken so it took so much time to buy this stuff because I can't na navigate the the s store menus of Earthbound. You guys know that, and I need to sell that actually. I still have a copy bracelet. Yeah, I can't navigate these things because you can't just say I want to buy this, 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 and this. You have to say, oh, I want to sell something. Yes, I need something else. What do I want? I want to sell. And you have to do this every single time you get an I you get or get rid of an item. And it annoys me to no end. It really does. Okay, you can take that. And that was 
Wow, that was worth a lot of money. In fact, with that, I'll just end off, end off this purchase spree by buying a couple more peanut cheese bars. Because Paula can hold them. Actually, one more is fine. And I won't bother depositing the money because it's always nice to have extra money floating around the wallet. Now, let's go to the top of this because we're not quite done exploring uh, Saturn Valley. Three to zombie full. I saw. Bad stink behind falls. Zoom. And it took so long that I might have even forgotten my accent for these guys, which would be a horrible crime that I would have to pay for with my life and also my happiness. Lots of friends taken behind falls. Why, why? Boing. Yeah, so the big story here, in case you can't decipher these guys' accent, is that their friends were taken behind f some falls, the Grapefruit Falls. And to get behind there, you need a password, and the password is to uh, verbally say password, and um, then wait there for three minutes. So it's a very backwards password, but it, it fits with what Earthbound is all about. It's about being strange and not being afraid of being strange. So we're going to go back into Great, Great Fruit Falls, go to, sa uh, go to the falls themselves, and then... Say pass, say say password, and then stay there for a couple minutes. And while that happens, I will talk about something that happened because with all of this talk of PSI Frieza, it occurred to me that let's, let's use this for funsies. It occurred to me that um, there's a new Dragon Ball series being made this year, which it delights me to no end because I love Dragon Ball Z, and you guys know I love Dragon Ball Z. It's a fantastic uh, anime, and it's literally the only anime I've ever watched, and I just finished it recently. So I'm starting into GT, even though it's not as good, and having fun with it. And then they released that they are coming out with Dragon Ball Super, which I have no idea how long it's supposed to be, but it's a new anime, at the very least. A new anime at the first for the first time in 20 years. Is that crazy? Dragon Ball Z ended, or Dragon Ball GT ended the year I was born. So, like, that's that's crazy to think about. Oh, by the way, these violent roaches aren't really that scary. You just use PSI Frieza on them and kill them instantly. I probably don't even need to use PSI Freeze. I could probably just bash, but using Freeze makes me feel better inside. Uh, Jeff's level's now 19. Defense went up by 1. Guts went up by 1. IQ went up by 1. Luck went up by 1. Maximum HP went up by 2. And we carry onward. We've come so far, and we've tried so hard. But in the end, I don't want to fight those frogs. I really don't like fighting these frogs. I mean, the crocodiles are okay. The crocodiles are still hard, but they're better. But the frogs take forever, even if you use PSI. And here's Camera Guy. I believe, is this his first picture with the whole, the group of three? I think it is. So let's smile extra wide this time. Because he's a photographic genius. Oh wait, I should do a voice for him. Um, uh, I'm a photographic genius if I do say so myself. Okay, get ready for an instant memory. Look at the camera. Ready? Say, Fuzzy Pickles. It's been a while since I've done Vegeta, and it's horrible. Wow, what a great photograph. It always bring back the fondest of memories. Yeah, I, my, <laughs> I'm, I need to use the Rust promoter on my Vegeta voice to get rid of the rust, because that makes sense. Say the password. And now, we get the delight of staying here for three minutes, and due to me recently expanding the episodes, even though I never did, we're going to be waiting the entire three minutes on camera while I talk about <laughs> politics. We're going to do a three-minute speech about politics and about how they are very important to society, and that it is important that they lower the voting age to age, I don't know, five, because it's important that the president elects learn how to garner the votes of people who couldn't vote before. And that's why I think, of all the famous artists, Van Gogh could probably handle himself the best in a fight. Although, going back to what I was saying earlier, if I was going to bet, um, the Van Gogh thing really put me in a new perspective. I never thought about it this way, but in a new light, looking back at the whole politician thing, I think that um, 
President Reagan would probably have the best dance moves. That made that really made me think. Huh. You know what? Good talk, guys. I'm glad I extended the the times of the episodes because it really gives me a chance to get a one v one with you guys. Not I'm talking not talking about fighting, but you can really learn a lot about a person by sitting for three minutes at a waterfall and talking about life. You know, uh, that that was a good chat. But anyway, we are now in the place. What place is this? This is Belch Base. Let's progress on. It is a factory underneath uh, Grapefruit Falls. I, I keep wanting to say Hightail Falls because of Mario Galaxy. Did you bring some fly honey? It's Master Belch's favorite. Huh. <laughs> asking me if I brought fly honey is like asking you if you brought tortillas to an Italian quesadilla siesta. Of course. Okay, you may pass through. Hey, be careful. Be sure you don't drop it. So we're being allowed past here, although we're being we're also being followed by this blob. This blob is one of the mini barfs that we fought last time. Not one of, because we only saw one. There's a bomb inside, Ness takes it. Let's immediately give that to Jeff. Give Jeff. Never mind, he can't fit it in his inventory. Okay, let's... Je Ness, keep it. Keep it, bro. Have it. Have a bomb. Bomb? Yes, bomb. I've been using uh, that joke a lot. Now, I don't even know what the bomb joke is really from. Okay, it's a floppy. Wonderful. Now, floppies are not that strong. You can just use bash attacks and kill the floppies easily. Yeah, look at that. But if I remember right, they get... Yeah, they get a ton of experience from just one floppy. So this is a good place in the game to bring Paula and Jeff up to Ness's level. Because the, uh, Paula's offense went up by one, defense went up by one, speed went up by one, IQ went up by one, maximum HP went up by two, maximum PP went up by five. Paula realized the power of PSI Fire Beta. Or as I like to call it, Fireb, or Firab. Which sounds pretty awesome. Fire Beta, not, not Balfa, Beta does 160 points of damage each as opposed to 80. So it scales very well. Well, not very well. It scales linearly where for double the PP cost, it does double the damage. So it doesn't scale as well as um, as Rockin, but it's still, it's still better. I personally would rather use fire though. Oh, oh snap. Oh snap. Everybody come here. It's a party. Bring your hugs. Oh, rockin! You know what? You guys don't even need to do anything because it's going—it's going to be fine. Ness tried PSI Rockin Beta, and it will kill all of the foppies and kill the foppies. Oh, this will be a, a gigantic chunk of experience. Oh, baby! Oh, baby! Two, almost two thousand experience. Wow, and you know what? There's even more. There's even more wonderfully goodness. Oh, come in for a group hug, guys. Aha! Uh -huh. Look at the wonderful majesty of the foppies. Ah, oh, they look like poros. Rockin', do your stuff. And, uh, Paula, since you don't really need to do anything, go ahead and use Magnet on one of them, because that works. Uh, and Jeff? Spy. Spy on Foppy Alpha. You spy on that Foppy. Offense is in 29. We got stats. We got more stats. Uh, wow, that's a lot of stats. I never explained that. But Spy will just give you the stats and weaknesses of each enemy, which is really neat, and it makes it easy for the community to find out different things about each enemy. Um, but otherwise, I wouldn't really use it, because it's kind of a waste of a turn. That's what guys are for now. And this is going to give us probably 4,000 experience. I think it's going to give us close to 4,000. Okay, let's look. You can tell I really love the Foppies. I mean, it's random that they would give this much. Okay, not 4,000. That Maybe that was an exaggeration. But 2,500 is going to give us a level up. Ness's level is now 24. Oh, baby. Offense went up by 4. Speed went up by 2. Guts went up by 2. Luck went up by 1. Maximum HP went up by 1. Ness realized the power of healing beta. Paula's level is now 20. 
Offense went up by two. Defense went up by one. Speed went up by two. Guts went up by two. Vitality went up by one. IQ went up by one. Luck went up by two. Maximum HP went up by one. Maximum PP went up by five. And now, Jeff's level's now 20. Oh, baby! Offense went up by three. Defense went up by two. Guts went up by one. IQ went up by two. Luck went up by one. Maximum HP went up by three. So, level ups all around. It doesn't even matter that they were good level ups. They were level ups, period. And now... They're, they're catching up to Ness. Snap. Look at that. These are good stats. And Paula has 75 PP. So she's finally surpassed Ness in that area. Uh, we can we can go a little bit further. I won't leave this floor. But uh, I would like to go a little bit further before we do stuff. Because it going further helps us discover that the Mr. Saturns are in bondage. It's hard to make the gross sounds that Master Belch does. I know I can't do it. Master Belch is the slimiest. However, I heard he's also serving some Gygus guy. That I cannot believe. So, this is almost an independent enemy. They're not they're not necessarily Gygus's minions, but they're serving another entity. Independent well, they think independent from Gygus. But that's that's kind of interesting. I thought that was cool. But we got gigantic level ups this episode and I'm not sure if I'm cutting the episode. Whoa! No, sorry. We're episodes going long. I found Foppies. Come here, Foppies or Furbies or. Sorry, guys. I the episode's going to go a little bit long because I need to kill these Foppies. You can tell that I I love Foppies and all that they stand for. Foppy Alpha, and then we'll just use this attack. Just a random one. Oh, Foppies. Foppies. The, it, the outro has to wait because the, there are Foppies here. And foppies mean experience, maybe another level up. I doubt it though. But a lot of foppies still. And Foppy E always lives. Foppy E, what is wrong with you, Foppy E? You have two E's in your name. It's like Foppy E, you have a stutter. What do you know? Oh wow, another level up. Jeff's level is now 21. Excellent way to end off an episode. IQ went up by one. Maximum HP went up by one. So a, a meh level up, but it was still a level up. So, okay, now I will do my outro now that I got another level up and a bunch of experience. Yeah. And we had a good talk at the waterfall about life and biology and soci sociology and theology and all the eologies. But anyway, that's going to be it for this episode. Next time, we're going to be going further in Belch's base, discovering any more dark secrets that he may be hiding besides the slavery and bondage of the Mr. Saturns. This is a very interesting area. It's secret. It's beneath a waterfall. The password is password. And also time. The password is also time. I will see you guys next time for more Pal Plays Earthbound. If you liked this episode, then comment. If you didn't like this episode, then comment and tell me how I could make the next episode so that you would like it. And I release new episodes of Earthbound Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. See you guys next time. Paladin out.